Hey guys, how you doing? So I've got a little bit of time before I go out refereeing. Clearly I'm uploading and um, yeah, just played a few games and been a bit bad bloody move. Lost a couple that I really shouldn't have done. So we're going to play um, a couple of 10 minutes and see if I can get back up to 1500. So this is an odd one. This is a D4. I played the Dutch and then this thing. And it's actually saying this is this is transposed transposed into bird's opening. I think I can just crack on with the Leningrad structure, I guess. All right, and play on. This is the nice thing about the Leningrad. First few moves. Well, that, what's the point in that? You're biting there, blood, biting. Okay, now the thing is that. White does have good control over e5, which is normally the, the key break here. But let's see how much hardware I can line up against that. I've got queen e8. I've got knight to one of these two squares, all of which looks at this. If I move my knight out of the way, in fact, how about this? How about this now? Now my bishop's looking at there as well. Yeah, so that's one, two. I've got three. I've got four. And how many def defenders? And now we have a nice... Yeah, I mean, we give up a pawn, but... Or maybe not give up a pawn. Okay, you could have you could have actually taken that pawn. And look at that king side now. Yeah, it was slightly defended though. Just a little bit defended. Hello. What are you up to? What are you doing? He's very intrigued about what's going on in the world. Yes, I know it's a Leningrad Dutch, I know. You wouldn't. Well, you're not playing though, are you? Ow! Ow, don't hurt me. Help! Help! I'm being attacked by a tiger. Help! Ouch! That actually quite hurts. Okay, go over here. Join you. Pod. Right. <clears throat> so we're in a good position. I have... A knight, I have a light squared bishop that wants to join the game. My light squared bishop, I guess, could kind of come here and help back up the pawn. Then I'm going to bring my knight out. Does my knight want to come here? Ooh, opponent is playing really quickly, which pleases me. All right, question is, does my knight want to come here, here? I don't know. I think bishop d7 is all right. Oh, he's literally just trying to throw the kitchen sink at me now. Uh, I don't know. So when your opponent's starting to go balls out and just chuck everything at you, just the thing is just to... You go yin. Yin hands. <laughs> You're not attack it, necessarily. And unless he just opens himself up to something stupid. Okay, this is defended by the queen. Um, I still want to get my knight in. I've, I've kind of got in my knight's way a bit here. <laughs> Hi, ever. Queen here, where did my queen come from? Yeah, I think queen here looks all right. Queen here, I could jump in there. Queen here, and he does this. He's just making, he's just making life harder for himself. Oh, oh oops, that was weird. Okay, well. I've gone there. Not my first mouse slip of the day. Earlier on, opponent took my queen and I, I meant to play recaptures and I pushed the pawn by accident instead. Oh, I've given up the pawn look. Look at this. I'm trying to tempt this pawn away so that I can pin this knight on the queen and then maybe win it with this, I don't know. But when your opponent starts to play too quick, key thing is don't copy him. Right, so that's defended. That king is starting to look a little bit exposed. Right, is it's time to get the knight. It's got to be time to get the knight out. Really has. He's actually got quite good pawn control over the centre here. But he is still a piece down. Okay, I'm thinking this, this. Something like that, yeah. 
Having said that, it gets in the way of the bishop. There takes... Do I want to get my queen on this diagonal? Do I want to centralise a rook? I've got a semi-open file. Let's get a rook on it. There's no rush. Oh my lord. My opponent is literally just... Oh, he wants to do this. So one of these pieces has to move. Which is it going to be? <sighs> Crikey. Hang on. This pawn here is pinned, right? It's not def That rook's not defended, so... I'm going to attack your queen instead of that. So I've got one less pawn, but I do have two bishops to his one. Which is pretty cool. Alright, alright. Um, I can come back now. If I come back and he pushes here... I can oh, just retreat, can't it? Don't matter. <laughs> if I do this, I'm just going to walk into problems on the dark skirts with that bishop, so. Hmm. This doesn't work. Pawn takes. I come back. How bad is that pawn structure? Definitely invigorates this bishop. No. Yeah, I thought about trying to stream earlier on, but I need to install more software to stream. Any recommendations for streaming software that works on Mac? Please let me know. I'm a Mac user. Used to be a PC guy. Um, even built my own PCs back in the day. I was a PC technician in uh, 98, something like that. All uh, right. You're eyeing this up, are you? Um, yeah, built computers and whatever. But from the day I got my first Mac, that was it. They just work. Hello. This comes with a discovered check. You need to be a little bit aware of that. I can't block with that bishop. I could pre-block with a bishop. Depends what opponent does next. If he does this, I'm not worried about pawn takes. Pawn takes, that's fine. But I think I might like to try and stick this bishop in there or at least leave it here. That's okay. Plan that? Nope. Okay. Now I actually have two attackers against this pawn. Yeah. Okay. Up the danger levels. Counterattack the queen, removing one of the pieces from the fork. Okay, here you go. Forks don't always necessarily automatically mean that you're going to lose one of the pieces. For example, if one of the pieces can move with check, then you might be able to move the other one, right? Or if one of the pieces can move by counterattacking something of greater value, likewise. Right, so just one a pawn. This hangs. This does hang. But then so does... Actually, we've got two attackers on this one. This is a really scrappy game. Good. Because I'm scrapping quite well at the moment. But I am also blundering, which is vexatious. Hello, what do you want? What do you want? What are you up to? <laughs> Meow. That is a puzzling move. I could wipe it out with my bishop. Um, how do we feel about this? Here he captures on Passant, I just move my knight to there. Kind of like that. What are you doing? Oh, they're trying to eat. 
They're ready to wean, I think, these guys. They've been, they've been on the nipple now for, well, since you were born, isn't it? And interestingly, these guys were born um, right next to us on the sofa. We sat there one night, about 11 o'clock, um, with this heavily pregnant cat. My wife nodded off. And then, a short while later, I had to wake her up because there was, like, slimy things popping out. We actually saw two of them literally being born. How cool is that? Hello. Oh, you're getting really fluffy now. You're actually getting really strokeable now. You're liking this. Yeah? I think they're ready to start eating. They're ready to start going onto solids now. Okay. Now, what the hell is this guy doing, right? Pawns are equal. He's literally down a minor piece. I have the bishop pair, and that was just... That was rotten. But the point is... I'm now, what, 11 points off 1,500. And we have an English, so we're going to go Dutch. You can play the Dutch against the English too. And let's do the same thing, okay? This is great. Double Dutch, innit? Double Dutch. Sometimes the video titles just write themselves. And this is very normal. So he's going for the, the fianchetto there. This is, this is the, like, okay absolutely bog standard leningrad starting position now what's interesting is that i've got i've got like a course in the leningrad from ginger gm but what frustrates me sometimes about these courses is they literally start from this position because at the expert level, 2000 plus, everybody plays the the best moves in the main line. So they, they're going at all, they basically branch out from that position two moves ago. Right, what's this about? Opponent is 1511 rated. I have this hits the queen. Did it, did it. Let's develop. Oh, I, that's what it's about, okay. But I do have the bishop. The bishop can technically retreat and cover this square. Now, the bishop can also come here, which is okay. Might run into a pawn. No, it won't. Now, do I want to chase the knight? I think I do. I think I do, because he can only go there or there, right? Oh, no, he can take the pawn. If I chase the knight, he takes the pawn. I take bishop takes. I don't know. If I drop back here, he's got still got three attackers on that pawn. But that pawn, look, saving the pawn is not my. It's not Private Ryan, right? I'm not going to lose sleep over the future of that pawn. So this bishop, okay, let's consider everything on, on its own merit. If I drop this bishop in here, right, it's probably going to get taken. I take, someone else takes. Huh. He's got to do something, because otherwise I take his bishop. Problem is with that, is this square. This is the thing I don't want. So I am going to chase the knight off, I think. If it takes here, I'm inclined to capture it because it also opens up a line to this pawn. This is undefended. But if queen takes, for example, I can drop my bishop back. If bishop takes, that's, oh, hello. This is also undefended. Uh, King's the only defender of this. My bishop is hanging. So something must be done. Okay. Oh. This, and I'm going to have to move the knight. After queen takes, was that, b7. But then this also hangs. Right. 
But I have to move the knight first, and I have to move it here. Now we're all kind of covered. I am threatening to capture here. I'm a pawn down, but his king is in a unhappy situation. Also, this, this. Undefended, undefended. You've got to always be counting. Eight. Oh, tits. Look at that. I'm not happy about that. I am not happy about that. I've just lost a rook. I didn't notice his fianchetto bishop. Right, resign that one. Bugger it. Let's go again. See, I'm getting embarrassed by people in the low 1500s. So it just shows what my level of play is. Okay, 1489, we'll go Vienna. Quiet. Okay, let's go for it. This now, occupy the center. Threaten to re recapture our pawn. Recapture our pawn. Everything's defended. And we definitely have a bit of a stamp on the game, and we haven't, we're not a pawn down. This is like the whole idea of the Freddy Krueger approach, right? Whether you're playing f4 with the white pieces or f5 with the black pieces, the idea is that as soon as you move your d pawn, you can recapture that pawn. And very often, because you haven't lost the tempo with the pawn capture, our recapture comes with development. So there we are, like. And we have two pawns in the center. We are definitely ahead in development. <clears throat> what you have to do from this point is not bugger it all up. Then how you guys feel about 10 minute games? You should only play a move like this if there's a real material benefit to doing so, like tangible concrete benefit. There takes, no, I don't think so. I think I'm just gonna develop. This is the thing about chess timing, the kind of timing, the, the rhythm, the cadence of the game really matters. And I'm just starting to figure this out. You know, like, in the book of Ecclesiastes, there's like, um, this is Old Testament. There's a time to rejoice, like a time to mourn, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. There's a bird song that uses a lot of those lines as well. Um, if you like your 60s music. Um, <clears throat> so sometimes it's the time to develop. Sometimes it's, it's the time to put development on hold and strike because there's the tactical reason to do so, okay? Um, I've, I've seen all of these moves many times before, which is good. You're like, when your castle to your opponent's king isn't, it's time to push in the middle, generally, right? And a, a, an immediate tactical opportunity or threat trumps all other considerations, generally, right? If you're looking at, at um, making a big material or positional gain or facing a big material or positional loss, then you should deal with that. You don't, you don't mess around. <coughs> the issue here is a bit like the Spanish, like the Roy Lopez, right? He's threatening to take out that knight. Now, this pawn is currently defended twice, but it means if my queen wanders off, and he takes, even if I take back, say, with a rook, it could hang this pawn. We don't want to do that. So probably something like this, maybe rook ad1, and just really double up. And I'm getting like a, a nice fist, you know, a nice clenched, dense fist in there, um, in the middle of the board, which, which I kind of, which I like. In, in martial arts, you know, and, and whatever, you, you learn that when you punch with a fist, it needs to be... Um, it really needs to be solid. What you don't want is a kind of a, a half clenched fist because when you punch with that, you're going to break your knuckles. You're going to break your um, metacarpals, right? So it has to be like, like, like a rock, rock, you know? And then it has to be in line with, with your arm. 
So I do like a lot of these positions when you just boom, boom, and everything is like in alignment and then you strike. I am the Bruce Lee of the Vienna game. Not comparing myself to Master Lee. Okay, now my first thought is Queen D3. I could also kick at a bish. Kick at a bish. He either takes the knight, in which case I improve my rook. My rook might even come around to, to G3. Or he dives back here. So if I do this, he comes back there. He comes here. There's then two attackers on this pawn. N not necessary, you know. So let's continue lining things up. You get everything lined up. You get everything ready before you strike. I love Simon Williams' term, premature attaculation. Get all your ducks lined up in a row. And then you can consider your pawn breaks like, like this. Did it, did it. I mean, you know, so this, this knight here now is not pinned. It's free to cause mayhem. Their pawn takes, maybe knight takes. Knight takes, bishop takes, and then both of my bishops are looking down here, you see. And that's nice. That's what you want. This bishop, look at that bishop. It, where, where's it targeting? It's targeting the key strategic squares of h4 and a3, right? It's hitting the sides of the board. That's not what you want your bishops to be doing, really. I mean, you know, unless these... these Piece, these squares here, for some strategic reason, have huge uh, strategic import, you know? So my, okay, so hitting my queen, okay. I'll just come back here. Knight can't take there, he gets taken with a discovery on this. Okay, I might hit push a3 and, and just say to that knight, get your silly furry horse face out of my half of the board. Face away. Go on. And now look at these knights. Look how far away they are from this king. So those t two, like, three moves that my opponent has made have not improved his position. <coughs> The pawn on f7 is pinned by my bishop and forever shall be, okay? My central pawns are really good. This is why you want your central pawns, okay? Is it time to do the same to this bishop and say, get the hell out of here, right? He cannot come back here. Why not? Because d5 is a fork. So if I kick him, he comes back here. If I kick him again, he has to go here, okay? So let's say this bishop is on this square. What does that tell us? Well, it's attacking this pawn, it's defended once. I can attack him with this, but that doesn't work because there's a barrage against that battery. So, oops, all that in mind, let's... I'm gonna improve this, I, I don't know if I wanna keep this rook on the F file, I think I probably do. Reason is it's semi-open, there's no white, white pawn on that file. So rook A, E1. Mm-hmm. Two attackers on here. How many defenders? Two. Although, as we mentioned before, one of them could be eradicated at any time. Now, I could push d5. d5, this knight can't come here. And can't really come here at this point either, because takes, takes, takes. We have two on what? So here, and the knight comes here. What about that? Well, I could take... Or this. Yes, there's another one to consider. Let's say pawn takes. Pawn takes. The bishop is hit. I think I think that's better. I'm gonna play that. Opponent's down to four twenty minutes. Or four minutes twenty as we say in uh, Britain. Alright. Um 
of feel like I want to get this knight out of. Now he has got one, two, three pieces or looking at that. I'm not going to keep this pawn. And it's looking at my bishop. So I think we take. If this moves, we've got tension between the queens. My queen is, is defended. Black's queen is also defended in three, four different ways. Very well defended. This is kind of the key diagonal very often in, in the Vienna game. Oh. What? You had literally, literally half your pieces. Wasn't it? No. One, two, three. I ex forgive me. I miscounted. You had three pieces looking at that pawn. And I only had two defenders. Oh. I haven't even. I'm, I'm in bare feet as well. I could have counted that, couldn't I? Very easily. It's a strange business, Frodo. Now I'm inclined to push e6. But then maybe what if pawn takes? Huh. Is it time now to kick this bishop back? If the bishop goes back here. Then it's not defending this square. Then I push e6 with a fork. I could always do that. That's not the end of the world. Also, this is a. Th oh, wow. Um, everything is screaming rook takes. Because this rook wants to come to g3 and pin this pawn. So when you've got more than. One p -p -p pawn p -p -p pin around the enemy's king. That's a nice situation to be in. Oh dear. Oh no. He checked me. Oh no, he's attacking my bishop. Um, so I've got a couple. I mean, I could stick my bishop here. I could stick it here. Difference is this square is kind of it is defended by a pawn. It also defends that pawn. So that's what I'll do, right? This might feel safer, but the bishop there is actually doing something, which means... Okay, okay, that was all right. I completely missed that when that, when that knight moved, my queen was under fire. However, this is still all good. This is good, right? This pawn here is still pinned. It's under attack twice. Right, he's hitting my bishop. No worries. I can play my rook to here. He has no light squared bishop, okay? So where does my bishop want to go? Or do we want to defend it? How about this? That defends it and hits this bishop too. If I do that, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? Yep. I'm okay. Panic over. So I'm thinking like rook g3, pawn f6, check. This pawn would be pinned, this pawn would be pinned, okay? Rook here, knight to here. Yeah, king just goes in the corner, doesn't he? What else have we got? Bishop back to here. I like that, because the knight's now vacated that square. Bishop can come to c3. Could be pushing on. This pawn takes, literally, bishop takes check. Because there's nothing defending that square now. A minute ago, everything was defending it, and now it's got nothing. Doesn't even hang that rook. I'm thinking this. I'm thinking this. Holy shit, there's a lot of pinging going on from um, WhatsApp. The uh, Chesterfield C team chat is going nuts. Okay, there he goes. I think bishop here just feels really good. So I'm going to do it. He's on 2 minutes 17. What's our rating? 1482. See, you know these points in a game. I, I, I look out for it when I do it. Oh, man. It's so one-dimensional, some of these attacks. Okay, now I'm, I'm starting to think about putting all my stuff on light squares because he's only got a dark squared bishop. 
Right. He wants to take out my bishop, does he? How about this? Yeah. 2 minutes 06. Yeah, there's some discussion about some summer event going on. Now he's trying to get all up in my face. How about this? Counterattack the knight looks okay. Also, if this knight moves, uh-oh. Right? Okay, you take my bishop. Do I want to take his bishop? Do I want to take his knight? Do I want to take this knight? Whichever one I don't take, the other one is still under threat. I feel like I want to take his bishop. I feel like his bishop is the stronger piece. Let him save the other one if he can. And remember, he can't go there or there or there or there, actually, because of all my stuff. So where's it going to go? Here? Here? Here's probably good. One minute 42. One minute 41. One minute 40. Actually, if this knight moves, same problem. Okay, so I think actually defending the knight is the way to go. I would probably think uh, rook f e8 is, is, is what to do. Having said that, it really does weaken this pawn too. Hmm. So let's think if he does this, that's what I think that's what he should do. One minute fifteen. I don't want to do anything like this. I don't want to, I want to, I want to keep this bishop threatening. And he's resigned. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. Okay. One for the road. E4 again. And we have a Caro Khan. And let's play the Oh No You Caro Can't. Oh. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Just playing random moves. Okay, well, we don't have the uh, traditional attack, but this is, this is okay. This is all right. I can pre-move that. We're a pawn down, but in return, as compo, we have all of this. Now, very often this bishop wants to come back onto this diagonal at some point in time. Let's castle the king. Queen defends his pawn. Knight defends his pawn. Opponent is trying to neutralize our light squared bishop. I'll often play this move. Because this is a bit... It's a bit slow, but it's, you know... Okay, this is an alternative, but it, it means the knight is still pinned. It doesn't do anything about the pin. That would have broken the pin. And prepared to castle. <sighs> so. We might trade queens. Now, I am down a pawn. I understand I'm down a pawn. So maybe I shouldn't be going trading queens at this point in time. Now, I take here. Knight can't take because it's pinned, right? The pin will... Queen will be lost. If I take here, queen takes. I take here. Ooh. I think that that is all right. All right. Now, yes, I'm giving up my bishop. My bishop's under threat now. So, I mean, if I drop it back, I've also got ideas of like this and, and attack here. But this is the point. If I can... Yeah, okay, I'm a pawn down, but look now, right? Three pawn islands. Um, if I trashed, if I gave up the exchange also, that would be poor. So let's do like this. Oh no, because then queen takes here with check. That wins the bishop. That we do not want. That we would not welcome. That, if I, if I... No. There he takes, takes. That pawn hangs. This is not a bad position. Queen here, get a rook across, threat to take the bishop. That feels more solid. I expect him to push a pawn. 
He has pushed no pawn. He's long castled. I don't think that was his plan at the start of the game. I do think that we should centralize rooks somehow. This is a thought. I'd, I'd love to take out this pawn. And this pawn is, is very often a little bit of a, an issue. So I'm going to play rook ad1 and defend that another time. So now he can't take. He's got two attackers on there since he long castled, right? If he attacks with a pawn, which is going to be e4, e5, uh, e6, e5, um, I, ha I, I may have issues. So, do I get this bishop out of here? Something like that. He's just hung a pawn, and then that one. Yeah. Now I know in in many ways capturing pawns around here when you're in. Uh, forget that. He says, lol, you're sick. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, that will do. That will do for all of that, guys. That was just silly. I just said he hung a pawn and I stopped looking. There you go. And that's, that's why I'm sub-1500 right now. You know, that's okay. And it's also really important to know that like I said, in many ways I'm playing well, but in many ways I'm playing too quickly. It's like I'm, it's kind of like I'm feeling good about how I'm playing, so I'm playing a bit too fast and loose, and I'm blundering for that reason. So, you know, it's got high levels in, in some parts of the game, lower levels in other parts of the game, and just playing too quickly, overlooking things, so there you go. Um, and when you know that you are doing it, when you know that you're not on top form and performing at your best, stop stop playing if you care about raising points. So that will do. I'm going to get ready for my my game. I put Wheatley Hills today. Wish me luck uh, getting assessed, and uh, and that's it. Hopefully the rugby rugby's better than the chess. But it's a it's a lovely day. A little bit breezy out there, but it's lovely and bright and, and dry. So should be good. Thanks for watching. See you later.